How has the family reunion experiences changed over time, or how, how do you think yeah. the family reunion has evolved? Losing Oscar and losing Frank, like, I think the reunions after that, just they feel different mm -hmm. in both a good way and a hard way. I mean, I think that, like, especially um, for me, who I was so incredibly close with, with grandfather, like that first reunion afterwards was really hard because it just felt so different. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it was really good because it still felt so much love and so much care and so much family that it was like, oh, like, because we have each other, we can get through this and it still can be great. Yeah, I mean, when I was a little kid, I was going to the pool and mm -hmm. going to the beach. And now I think it's having a glass of wine and just talking with people around dinner. So. <laughs> it took me a while to get used to the idea that little man <laughs> who I used to play shark attack with is now sitting there having a glass of wine. <laughs> Although, a few years ago, I finally said, oh, yeah, yeah, I, guess, yeah. I guess that is, uh, that's, that is the change. That's the change. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, seeing all the kids grow up, and that's been wonderful. Uh, the last few years, there haven't been as many skits, but we now have these wonderful videos that uh, will be a lasting memory of the reunions. Years ago, it was, oh, I know the can't wait, can't wait to see everybody, you know, and start naming off individuals all the way from people in Missouri to, of course, you, and then, of course, um, Leslie. Leslie's been a great support in my, my married life to my, you know, um, helping raise children, so I look forward to seeing her. They're becoming more of individual family vacations. I think the ones that we had 20 years ago were all one group. We did everything together. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but that's what they're becoming, too. I mean, now it's very different now that we're all becoming adults and we're in college and it's more fun just to sit around and talk about the silly things that we did in past reunions whereas in the past it was like where can we go to have fun let's go to Whitewater it had to be a specific activity every day where we went to have fun and now it's more just sitting around and playing cards or doing something to reflect on the past. I think that we have these little these little inside jokes these little expressions these little isms that when we say Captain Bob, everybody knows exactly what we mean. Or when you say, uh, you know, the, you know, the, the thing of the bill under the feet you know, of everybody remembers that. It's mm -hmm. like we have our mm -hmm. own language. On the Are side. you feeding um, your yeah, baby? Yeah, ice cream now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, the biggest change is that all these little babies that we used to have to take care of and that disrupted everything because they were crying have all grown up, and now they're disrupting things because they party all night and they never come home. <laughs> Do you think that's also changed the experience of coming to the reunions for you? Well, for me, it gives me a chance to see everybody, uh, all, all the younger people, uh, as they mature and as they grow. And for instance, this year, uh, when I walked in and, and Chad was sitting there, he's grown so much and changed so much then I thought, oh, we've got a visitor this year. <laughs> and then after a little while, I realized that it was Chad. Uh, so, um, yeah, I think that in that generation, it is always a delight uh, to see the uh, uh, third generation that I don't ordinarily visit on a regular basis. In the early days, it was very chaotic. We had, you know, six or seven kids. They were like under the age of five and they're just running everywhere and it was it was overwhelming and exhausting but um, it's much more fun now that I don't have to worry about where my kids are and <laughs> if they're drowning or whatever <laughs> so um, it, was, it was pretty chaotic but now it's, it's much better it's much more relaxed. It's a vacation. If you could have chose any other career what would it have been and why? I would have gone deeper into the sciences, okay. uh, uh, maybe uh, into research, um, and, and it's just such a stupendous field that I don't know where it would have led, but that's probably the direction I would have liked to have go, gone. And now every once in a while, I work, when I read an article, I think, Oh, gee, I'd really like to get involved in that, mm -hmm. but I don't think they want me anymore. <laughs>
Everybody has that fantasy dream job that's there you go. out there. Um, and I, you know, have kind of come to that stage where it's yeah, it's done. I mean, uh, there's I finished my collegiate eligibility as far as playing soccer is concerned, and I kind of thought, well, you know, if I don't get any jobs anywhere, and I don't get any offers or anything, then I am packing up my bags, going to Europe, and I'm going to try out for all the terrible low-level soccer teams that I can. Mm. Oh, that's easy. I'll be a chef. I'll be a chef. All right. I'd love to cook. Do something in the medical profession, in the doctor field. Mm-hmm. So you'd be a doctor if you... Of, of doctor some sort, yeah. Love pedi- pediatrics, so that was something that always sparked an interest in. I would love to have some type of profession where I could travel a lot more, where traveling was part of my job. I would be the first female ambassador to Mexico. And I'm thinking that even if I don't get there, all of the steps that would be necessary to um, at least lead in that direction would be really worthwhile and really satisfactory uh, and really pleasing. Because um, I get the sense when I'm studying like Latin American foreign policy um, or anything about Latin America in general that it's very much my calling. I suppose I could be an actor. An actor, yeah. there you go. <laughs> You're stealing what I was going to say here. <laughs> 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 yeah, you can both be yeah. in, in, in the political world. Because I think it's proven in history that one person can make an impact and make a difference. Acting or theater, since that was kind of another thing I really loved. Mm-hmm. But um, I think the other thing, as far as something I would love to do that probably like, no one might know about me, more exciting. Um, and my mother actually has a very similar one, is I would have loved to um, be like an archaeologist or doing uh-huh. something very, um, mostly because I just find human, like humanity, like fascinating. Mm-hmm. So um, doing something like that, I think I would have. Archaeology or anthropology. Anthropology, archaeology, somewhere mm-hmm. in that realm, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I would definitely be a sports analyst or a sports broadcaster of some sorts. That would be my, my ideal career for sure. Um, pole dancer, maybe? <laughs> no, I don't. Know. I love teaching. I really, really miss teaching, and I, I can't, I can't imagine that. I mean, it was probably the most rewarding experience I had. Just uh, six months ago, I had a, a man walk up to me at a craft bazaar of all places, and he said, "Excuse me, but do you teach at the prison?" I said, "Well, I used to." And he said, "Well, I was one of your students." I was like, you know, I always want to take a step back. <laughs> and uh, I said, really? And he goes, yeah, and I just want to tell you, I've been out for five years, and I'm never going back, and I have a really good job. And he said, and it's, and it's all because of you. And I was just like, mm. And it was, it was like, you know, because I, I never knew what happened to my yeah. students after they, you know, yeah. I knew some about some of them because I'd seen them on the news. But um, it was, and I know that happened a lot, that, yeah. that they did turn around. And I just, I can't imagine anything more rewarding than what I did. So I don't regret that at all.